Have you ever asked ChatGPT a simple question and gotten a wildly confident but completely wrong answer? You're not alone. AI has seriously amazed us, right? It can whip up poems, create awesome images, and even chat like a real person. How cool is that? But what if I told you this flashy, headline-grabbing AI is really just a seductive distraction that pulls us away from what truly matters? That's the argument from Margaret Mitchell, the chief ethics scientist at the AI company Hugging Face. In a recent article for MIT Technology Review, she argues that our obsession with generative AI, the technology behind tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney, is making us miss out on a much more powerful and reliable form of artificial intelligence. There's this amazing quiet revolution going on, you know? It's been happening for years, tackling real-world issues without all the noise and drama. Isn't that cool? There's this cool type of AI called predictive AI, and you know what? Mitchell says it's the secret sauce to really unlocking AI's full potential. How awesome is that? Let's jump right into this debate and really explore what everyone's talking about. Is generative AI just a high-tech parlor trick? And is predictive AI the unsung hero we should all be paying attention to? Let's break it down. First, let's get the definition straight. Think of it this way. Predictive AI is like a detective. And generative AI is like a storyteller. A detective, or predictive AI, sifts through evidence data to find a specific verifiable answer. Its job is classification and forecasting. It can totally check out an EKG to spot any heart rhythm issues, you know? We can totally predict crop yields by looking at weather patterns, right? It's pretty cool. You can easily spot safety risks on a factory floor, right? It's super important. You'll get a straightforward, useful insight that you can really act on. It's not just making stuff up. It's all about keeping it real, you know? It's all about uncovering the truth that's tucked away in the data, you know? That's why it's totally mailed it in high-stakes areas like medicine, science, and engineering for ages. These are the spots where you really got to have the right answer, okay? You definitely don't want a medical AI to go all wild with your diagnosis, right? Check this out. Let's dive into the world of generative AI, the ultimate storyteller. This is the tech that's totally got everyone buzzing and dreaming big. It doesn't just find answers, it creates them. This thing has been trained on tons of text and images from all over the internet, right? And its goal is to generate new content that looks like the data it was trained on. It's probabilistic meaning it's essentially playing a high-stakes guessing game to predict the next word in a sentence or the next pixel in an image. This is why it's so good at mimicking human conversation and creating beautiful art. But it's also why it's prone to what experts call hallucinations, making up facts, sources, and events with complete confidence. Mitchell points out that we keep using these storyteller A is for stuff they weren't meant for, right? We're asking them to play detective and dig up the real facts for us. That's exactly where all the trouble starts, and it just gets messy from there. One of the biggest issues Mitchell highlights is what she playfully calls AI slop, which is basically just low-quality AI content that misses the mark. This is the flood of low-quality synthetic content that's currently swamping the internet. Because generative models are so easy to use, AI generated articles, social media posts, and reviews are popping up everywhere these days. It's not just cluttering up our digital lives. It's really creating a big mess for the long haul. Just think about it for a sec. These AI models are totally trained on all sorts of data from the internet, right? It's wild. What happens when the internet is filled with content generated by other AIs? It's a phenomenon called semantic collapse or model collapse. The AI begins learning from its own output, getting smarter with every loop, leading to a feedback loop where the quality of the models degrades over time. It's like making a photocopy of a photocopy over and over again. In the end, the picture turns into this totally blurry, jumbled up mess, right? We're seriously messing up our own data, and that's just not cool, you know? That could really shake things up for how AI develops in the future. And let's not forget about the cost, which is a whole other story. Running these huge generative models really costs a ton and eats up a lot of energy, you know? Every time you throw a question at ChatGPT, it needs a ton of computing power to give you a solid answer. Mitchell argues that in many cases, we're using this resource-heavy technology for tasks that a simpler, more efficient predictive model could handle much better. It's honestly like using a sledgehammer just to crack a tiny nut, right? Need to sum up a document? Here's how you can do it easily. 
A well-designed predictive model could extract the key points far more reliably and cheaply than a generative model that might hallucinate details. Or miss the main idea entirely. The buzz around generative models has sparked a total gold rush vibe, you know? Pushing companies to invest billions in a technology that might not be the right tool for the job. Leading to a huge waste of resources. So where does this leave us, you know? What's the next move? Is generative AI really useless, or is there more to the story? Not even close. That's definitely not how I see it at all. Mitchell isn't saying we should ditch it completely, you know? He's just sharing his thoughts. It's got amazing potential for fun and creative ideas, right? Let's brainstorm. It's like a whole new way to connect with technology, you know? Super cool. It's not really about the tech itself, but all the hype and how we're actually using it, you know? The key, she suggests, is really to see the difference between finding an answer and just making one up, you know? Using the right tool for the job makes everything easier and way more fun. For creativity and inspiration, a storyteller AI is fantastic. But for tasks that require accuracy, reliability, and verifiable truth, we need the detective predictive AI. Mitchell thinks 2026 could be a game-changing year for all of us as the excitement fades and the bills for running generative models keep climbing. She really thinks that businesses and developers will start hunting for smarter practical solutions. The focus will shift away from creating AIs that can imitate humans and toward creating AIs that are genuinely useful. The future of AI isn't just about creating a chatbot that can trick us into believing it's human, you know? It's all about making tech that's super helpful and actually usable in our everyday lives. It's all about creating a bunch of handy tools that really help us tackle real-life problems. Picture this, a future where the best of both AI worlds come together, right? We could totally use natural language interfaces powered by generative tech to make things way easier and more fun. You can totally connect with some amazing predictive models that really pack a punch. You can totally chat with a medical AI in simple English. Just ask it to check out a patient's info and guess the risk of a certain disease. How cool is that? The generative part would handle the conversation, while the predictive part would provide the accurate, life-saving analysis. This is the future Mitchell envisions one where we move beyond this seductive distraction of imitation. We're all about crafting awesome tools that really amp up our smarts and add genuine value, you know? It's all about making life easier and more fun. In essence, the argument is a call for a more mature, pragmatic approach to artificial intelligence. It's time to look past the flashy demos and start asking tougher questions. Is this AI model the most effective and efficient tool for this problem? Can we really trust this? Like, is it actually reliable or what? Is it cool to trust what it's spitting out? I mean, can I really rely on it? Focusing on being helpful and spot on instead of just copying what others do. We can build an AI ecosystem that is more sustainable, more powerful, and ultimately more beneficial for all of humanity. Let's stop chasing that ghost in the machine and focus on creating better tools that actually help us out. The quiet revolution of predictive AI has been delivering results for years. It's time we finally started listening. Really appreciate you tuning in. Hope you had a blast watching this. What do you guys think about this whole thing? I'm really curious. Are you team generative AI or team predictive AI? Which one gets you excited? Do you think they'll ever team up and make magic happen together? I'd love to hear what you think, so drop your thoughts in the comments. If this video gave you some cool insights, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more deep dives into the world of technology. See you in the next one.